Hey, what's up? It's Mark. It's John. We're, We're Dirty, Dirty Honey, Honey, and you're watching Heavy Consequence on Consequence of Sound. And I remember the first time I, I heard Even Flow, it's kind of one of those staple pieces like a Welcome to the Jungle um, or like a Right Now by Van Halen. It's always on at sporting events. And Even Flow was just a staple like warm up song growing up on like the hockey warm up or the lacrosse warm up and such an anthemic riff and tune. And then it wasn't till um, a little later of, of knowing all those songs that you dive into Eddie's lyrical content and you start to realize that, wow, even flow isn't, it's not like a, it's a pretty deep tune. Um, and then he's, songs like- It's like dark a lot, isn't he? Not in a bad way, but I mean, like he's not just, He's that Seattle grunge sort of. He was he was angry, you know, and alive. Also, that's also like a total like like anthem, sports anthem song. So, but then you you start going into the the content of Why Go and obviously certainly Black and Alive. Like those are dark songs. Jeremy. And I, yeah, and I you really start to respect this guy's like lyrical content and and his life story is so in there um yeah i read their book when i was living in new york and i was like yeah i just took a deep dive into the lyrical content I was like, this guy's a fucking genius um and it he's got his own style with the melodies too he likes to like squeeze a lot of words into his melodies um which i thought was unique uh, and interesting. He doesn't necessarily stick to the melody and he's got his own thing happening there, which I just love. And when you took like a Jimi Hendrix thing, almost, it's almost like a, it's a weird poetry thing where he doesn't put punctuation at the end of like a melodic idea. He'll just keep going with whatever the sentence is into the line. Like I'm trying to think of a good idea. Dude, what's the one where it's like, Nastiest teeth and recess lady's breast. How could I forget? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the punctuation is 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 weird. There's some sort of poetic term for that. But yeah, it's like that line. He doesn't sing any other line like that. Right, he right, just right. Fit those words in that time. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's not something it I do so much. One, but. but yeah, he he's a wizard with telling a story in a very Springsteen like way and in, in his own sort of. Yeah, his own sort of performance, but fucking great record. We got a lot of really cool anecdotes about. No, Nick's first was Versus. Yeah, that's a Brendan O'Brien record, though. Yeah. But we we still heard a lot of great anecdotes about Pearl Jam because our producer worked with hmm. with Eddie and and Pearl Jam on a lot of stuff, and just hearing crazy stories about how they wrote "Elderly Woman" behind the counter, uh, you know, in a small town. Just Great, great anecdotes from Nick about yeah, that's and a great song. But yeah, what about you? So the classic rock discovery became sort of like this like project to find like what came after, you know, and it's sort of the last batch of that kind of style of music was the early nineties stuff. So I got this sort of one purchase of that era of stuff. It was kind of like my first like CD purchase. So I got like, I got all the guns CDs. I think we were not lies. I didn't get lies. So I got, and then I got Nirvana and then I got Pearl Jam 10. And I really spun the crap out of them. And I, the thing that stuck with me was the guns influence ultimately. But, um, you know, there was just some standout guitar tracks like uh, Even Flow and, um, Alive, alive. Great, yeah, and just like long, big guitar solos and stuff, and and Jeremy and Black were the two other songs I remember specifically. Um, it was just, it was really just the, one of the first, you know, physical purchases I made. <laughs> they were yeah. one of the only bands out of that grunge era, though, where really the guitar player could. That's rip. the thing. I think that's what it was. Was they were actually still taking guitar solos, but they just weren't doing it with the cartoonish bravado. 